on issues affecting you in the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Another business segment of Dialogue in Diaspora, 2 to 3 p.m. every Monday. But guess what? You know you can be part of the program. Just send us an email at bentelevisionuk at gmail.com. Dialogue in Diaspora, the voice, your opinion on our TV. Welcome to the Marketplace. The Marketplace is here to promote your business products and services and all your upcoming events. The Marketplace, now showing on Ben TV Sky 182 every Saturday at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 3 p.m. Do call us on 0743-890-9022 or 0748-231-2105 and like us on Facebook, The Marketplace. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, The Marketplace, here to showcase you to the world, to reach a wider audience. So don't delay, your customers are waiting. Hi, welcome to another edition of Dialogue in Diaspora, coming to you live from Ben Television Studio in London, United Kingdom. You're watching the first ethnic TV station called Ben Television. And today we're basically going to talk about the major issues that affect the BME communities as much as things that are happening in Nigeria. Nigeria, the most populous black nation in the world and potentially the number one economy on the African continent. Politically, things have been going up and down between the two major political parties, be it the APC and the PDP. Nevertheless, there are other parties, of course, that are trying to put things together. So what we're going to do here at this minute is we have the Honorable uh, Kaidi Amusong, who has been a former member of the House of Rep in Nigeria between the, uh, 2003 and 2011. Honorable, it's a pleasure to have you in London. My pleasure, Alisa. Good morning. 
to you and to the man management of Ben TV station. And at the same time, good morning to you viewers. Thank you so much. Uh, Nigeria has been in the eye of the world, but before then as well, globally in this present time, people are talking about the coming election in the United States of America between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Okay. Uh, there has been issues that have just emerged about the so-called email scandal. And somehow now the rating and the opinion poll is talking about something of the, in the nature of the, the point gap between Hillary and Donald Trump is reducing to something like a two margin, two point margin. Do you think Nigeria really bother or should care about what happened in the United States as a politician? What is very important that we care about who becomes the, the leading world power? The leading world power because um, whatever happened in the United States affects the whole world. And whoever is going to become the world power we must be interested in who becomes because definitely there's no way we're going to, you know, exonerate Nigeria out of it because policies made in most of the Americans uh, this thing <coughs> by the American government um, <coughs> in one way or the other affects Nigeria too. Of course, you know, you know, United Nations is being, you know, controlled by the uh, world power. And um, of course, definitely we are we key into some of this and definitely we must as a matter of importance, you know, be concerned about who becomes the world power. So between you know, uh, Nigeria should be concerned about who becomes the, the, the strongest, the strongest president in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So does it really, you know, the Nigerians love the Obama feel factor. And now we have Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Well, I wouldn't want to preempt the Americans. Yes. But as far as I'm concerned, by my own opinion, I'm of the opinion that I am in support of Hillary Clinton. That's my, my own yes, personal, opinion. personal opinion. Because from the utterances of uh, <laughs> uh, my, 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 Donald. Donald Trump, I don't, I don't think we can have a better uh, governance in the world. If he emerged as, as the abso president. Absolutely. That is my own personal yes, opinion. Correct. If you ask me to go to poll and vote, if I, as an American, I want to vote, I would rather vote um, um, Hillary, Hillary than voting for Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Good. Well, that's, as you said, that's a personal opinion, something Absolutely. that you and that's my personal watch opinion. based on their utterances. Honestly. Now, should utterance be a major factor on the African continent then? Well, absolutely. By our leaders, absolutely, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. Because a leader must always be caution of whatever you say. Because one thing is this, you are not speaking for yourself. You are speaking for a nation. And whatever comes out from your mouth, are you getting me? Mm. It's, it's more like a bombshell. It affects every segment of that co country. Every segment of that nation where you are the number one citizen. So before a president of a nation voice out something, he's supposed to have been vetted by various sectors under, his <clears throat> under the presidency. Yes. It's like you're talking about write-ups or speech by the president. You know, it goes through a lot of stages before it is finally recommended that the president should go and make that speech. Are you with me? Yes. Because they know whatever comes out from the speech of the president affects the nation one way or the other. Okay. So it has to be vetted. Very well. It has to be vetted. We are talking about politics and we're talking about the economies Absolutely. of the world and more so in relevance to Nigeria as, they, as potentially before, uh, officially before, the number one economy on the African continent. Before. You have been a politician, kind of a still a politician, even though you're still in business and so you're dangling between the two from your normal run around and to the politics of the, Nigeria. Yeah. How will you describe the political situation so far based on what you've seen? Well, in the last uh, few months now, and I mean, let's say a year plus now since the advent of this uh, new administration, I've been keeping watch. Because um, if I say I've granted any interview, live or whatever, this is going to be the first. Because 
By my own assessment, I like to give a kind of some time to assess the performance of uh, uh, a government. Yeah. You don't just judge a government by just merely coming to the office within a short period. You have to give them some time, you know, to see how they will perform. Mm -hmm. Well, with this one that I've been following with the present administration of uh, President Muhammad Dubari that I've been following, yes. I will want to comment in to start with on area of corruption fight. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he has done well. And I will also want to advise and employ him if there is any possibility of doing more. Because to me, Corruption in Nigeria is more like an endemic. It's like an HIV virus that uh, is running in the blood of virtually almost every Nigerian mm -hmm. that has no cure. So whatever that is needed to be done to cure it has to be done. And that is my own. He has done very, very well in that area. But the caveat that I will put is that he should do this corruption fight across board and not necessarily the opposition only. Why because it, from what we have been seeing, no, from what we have been seeing, it's just the opposition and the opposition. Are you with me? Mm. It's just the opposition. Most of the petition that was written against cabinet members and all sort of things, I don't know what they've been doing. Maybe they are investigating them or not, but I've not seen any kind of invitation to any of them or rather arrest. Or any other thing but we've been hearing petition about some ministers mm. on the pages of newspapers but none has been either invited nor arrest i am aware minister doesn't have immunity is that also that's correct like the judges too don't have mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know that judges don't have until we see oh, what happened happen in the recent time so do minister too do not have immunity the only people that are immune in nigeria one the president the vice president, the governor, the governor and the mm -hmm. deputy. Those are the ones that are immune from being prosecution and what arrested. So I want to implore PMB not to restrain that corruption fight to just basically people outside his own party. I'm sorry with all due respect. Because we've seen when Obasanjo was also fighting this corruption, he was also fighting within. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. That's why you see the like of uh, Tafaba Logu was arrested. Uh, the like of one of my leader, uh, the body judge, uh, uh, the high and mighty, was also prosecuted and eventually arrested. And you know what happened to him? So, uh, and then um, Sondia Folabi, who happens to be a senior student to Obasanjo while they were in secondary school, was prosecuted as well. He called him my senior while he was even the president. He was also prosecuted. So I believe this fight should be taken in, will be taken inward, so not just uh, outside. You remember, uh, let's uh, obey, for example, when you talk about Olorun Obasanjo's era, he arrested people that are <coughs> close to him. The, the insinuation then was because they disrespect or were not towing the line no, of what no, he no. wanted. Let, 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 let me tell you one thing. When you arrest anybody, definitely they will find a way out. Right. To claim innocence and claim it's because of one thing or the other. Even most of those arrested as of today, they are still claiming innocence and looking for a way out that that's not where it is not following the process, it's not doing it. Definitely, they must find a way out. But the president must be focused on whatever he's doing. So, so far, Nigerians are not convinced that the President Buhari era is dealing with corruption. Well, well Nigerians are convinced, so to say. I am also convinced. That's why I was comm I, I'm commending him. Because I know whatever is needed to be done to eradicate corruption in Nigeria is very, very keen. Because to me, even let me tell you one thing. I know I won't get the support for it. While I was in the parliament, I happened to go to China on a government delegation with some of our members. Mm. And while in China, we met with the parliamentarian in China and in the course of our discussion, they told them they started their reform within the scope of eight good years. And as of today, they had over 400 billion in foreign reserves. That was as far back as 2004. 
Are you getting me? So within two and with, uh, with the, no, no, that was 2004. Oh, yeah. And to 2004, backward eight years, they were able to have over $400 billion in their in reserve. foreign reserve. And coupled with the, a lot of development that has been done in that state, in that country rather. However, when it comes to question and answer, I was so curious to ask them, what magic did you do to be able to achieve all of this? And in the course of their answer, they told us that because of the level of corruption in that country, the first law that was enacted that anybody found guilty of corruption is punishable by what? Yeah. Capital punishment. <clears throat> yeah. I was so, you know, um, catchy up, you know, with this thing that when I got back to Nigeria, I picked up the EFCC Act. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And I made it to capital punishment. But alas, I did not have a single support. Mm. Not even a single person supported me. In the me. house. I'm telling you, out of the 360 members, everybody that I go to, they rejected it. Yes. So can you then uh, add that this is one of the major problems in Nigeria, not just from the governors of the presidency it, it, or the it state It is not government, just from the presidency or the government. The Corruption is from the, is from the, is from the grassroots up to everywhere. Even I tell you, as I was coming from Nigeria, at the customs immigration, they were asking, ah, what do you have for, for us for the weekend? I said, nothing. There's recession. That's before leaving the country. Uh, I'm telling you. I told them nothing. <clears throat> nothing. I don't have anything. Because it is my right for you to sure. stop my passport. Yeah. Why do you need to ask me for a weekend? It's a self of bribery. We have to change our orientation. Uh, let me quickly slow you that a tiny bit because you say kind of a form of bribery so that people may understand. Mm. <clears throat> Is bribery not kind of a deduct to the point that say you are asking me before I give you something, though they have already done your both, passport? Both, means, both those who are asking yes. and the giver, they are guilty. Subject to if, you need, if they're giving you a favor before stamping. You don't, you don't, look, if you do me, if you stamp my passport, Which is and I see it as a favor, you don't need to ask me if I did it willingly. It's a different ballgame. Don't ask me. My own attitude to it is that if I realize you did me a favor, and you are in a government office or in a paid office, yeah. and I realize that the favor you did to me, it will run me to give you a dash, I will do it willingly. But if you mistakenly ask me, that ends it up. That has been my own way of yeah. doing it. It ends everything up. I will not give. But just leave me alone to act according to my conscience. conscience. That is it. Actually, somebody did send a message of, of that nature that uh, at the Nigerian airport, uh, somebody from Odudua Group talking about it, that things need to change even at that Warrior point. Orientation, even from the grassroots to, to contest an election. You have to bribe the electorate. You have to all this thing. We must look for a way to change the orientation because without that, we cannot get. We can't get a near perfect good leader. Can that happen when the government is not paying salaries? Well, my dear brother, it cannot happen. But we must find a solution to that. So, which means government must then? It must. How can somebody work without paying? Look, my staff in my office. My priority is their salary, no matter what happens. If I'm going to borrow, whatever I'm going to do, if I'm not going to give my household their own allowances, I must pay my staff salary. Because I know the kind of shame attached to one person with that little amount of money. And when you look at the basic salary in Nigeria, compared with the current exchange rate, what is, uh, what is 18,000 Naira? By the time you calculate it, to, it, it amounts to $40. Which is amount to about yeah per month That's amount to about twenty two twenty three pounds in a month. It's true. And you know how many soul is attached to this amount of money. And this is this eighteen thousand we're talking about. This is the minimum wage. Minimum that the minimum minimum pay minimum wage. Public workers in and the firm are not able to pay it. As a private as a private entrepreneur, I make that salary a priority. Even. If I don't have, I must look for it. They will have to transport themselves from home to office, feed themselves and feed the family. A lot of hunger about because of the dependence syndrome around our people. That my brother is working, I'm not working, you have to, you know, 
that single, that little amount of money has so many souls attached to, to it. it. This inability to pay salary has turned so many people to beggars. And that is what is causing the issue of what they have for us for Central. the weekend. Yeah. Virtually any office you go to. Virtually almost all offices. So the government must find a way. I cannot keep my children in the house. And I am unable to feed them. I must look for a way. It's important. It is important. As a criteria. Wow. Well, we're pre I'm presently having the privilege of having Honorable Kaidi Amuson, who is a former member of the Nigerian House of Representatives between the uh, year 2003 and 2011, has been an advocate, according to his presentation, of probably introducing the death sentence for people who are found to be corrupt or criminally minded in Nigeria without any support. And he is still in the prime of Nigerian politics, be it in the, in the opposition party in the Nigerian system presently, but he is still a member of PDP. PDP. I'm a member Le because I hate to ship ground. I'm in PDP to serve the people. That does not make me to be running Elta Skelter from one party or the other to be able to, you know, get, get myself a position. Mm. It's only those who are not confident in themselves that run Elta Skelter from one party to another to be able either which way grab a position. I'm not in for that. If I decided I'm going to stay in this party, serve you, if my service is not commensurate with what you require, then I go back home. I have a business. My business never lack. Politics did not stop my own business. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. Each and every time I'm in political office, I always delegate authority to the business to manage my business. Well, I may be losing some money, but at the same time, my business is still what? running, mm -hmm. and I'm making something out of it because I don't see politics as a profession. It's a side attraction as far as I believe. Mm -hmm. Other than people who see politics as a major business. It's no business as far as I'm concerned. It's a service to humanity. If will you then advocate a part-time parliamentarian? Why system? not if not? Why not if not? But to me, politics should be a side attraction and not a major. You know, some people, they call themselves um, 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 professional politicians, mm. which I don't belong to that class. Because I'm coming from the business world before joining politics, and I'm joining the politics, my business is And as soon as I leave the department, I dust my office. I move back to the office. I start doing what I also know best. And but at the same time, I still participate in politics. Coming back to this issue of the corruption, mm. before I forget. You see, there's one thing that I am opposed to in the course of perversing the justice in the area of corruption. Mm -hmm. Look at the plea bargain that is being introduced in Nigeria today. Asking corrupt officials to refund the stolen wealth. Yes. Are you getting me? To me, I will not say they should not refund. Mm -hmm. But they should refund the money eh, in to commensurate with the rate of exchange as at the time they stole it. Are you getting mm -hmm. me? Because when you look at the situation now, this, this issue of plea bargain is encouraging corruption. And if you ask me why, I tell you. Encouraging corruption in the sense that, look at the time they stole the money. Dollar was at 199. Probably didn't and know. for a corrupt person who is not sure, who cannot be able to explain the source of that wealth, what they do is change the money, convert it to dollar, either transfer it to a foreign account, or keep it in a, in, 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 in a hole or a warehouse or sock away like we used to hear mm. and all sort of things. But the situation on the ground now has further enriched corrupt people. As at the time they stole the money, dollar was 199. Is it not just better? At now, the return the now, money? as they are returning the money, they are returning it in Naira. But don't forget that that their money eh, has multiplied by three or by two, or whichever one, yeah. or times two and a half. So it further enriches them. All they need to do is just take some part, some of the money, and return it. What about the one that is left with them? No one. 
those who are confident of themselves that can defend every cobalt they have, they keep their own money in Naira. But they were wallowing in abject, abject suffering now. Because when you look at the Naira now, it has depreciated the young Which control. is affecting business. Absolutely affecting businesses and all sorts of things. Okay, just for a minute, let me quickly take... Uh, I have a question from Tunji Awuni who said, what is your... Uh, what's your opinion about the uh, faction in PDP? But before that, let me take this caller. Hello, you're welcome to the program. Where are you calling from? Hello, are you with me? Okay, before I get that. Hello, good morning. My name is Stephen. I'm calling from Steve Lynch. Okay, Steve from Steve Lynch. You're welcome to the program. Yes, I am with you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate in the discussion. After the issue of corruption in Nigeria, I don't think it is possible to work it out in our generation currently. Can you turn down because the volume of your TV, please? You want to wipe out corruption on one hand, and at the same time, you are promoting corruption. Now, the civil servant that forms the bulk of the society, you are not paying them their salary, and you don't want them to be corrupt. Where do they want to take salary? Where do they want to take money to eat? Okay. Even in Logo State presently, the civil servants are not getting their salary, and you don't want them to, take to, be, to be corrupt. If you go to any offices, because they don't take salary, they are bound to take money from you before they deal with your file. Recently, I was not paid my pension, <coughs> which I was due. I went to the Kuta Secretariat. I was told you have not been paid salary. If you want to do your, your pension, you have to put something on the table. I have to do it. Kaganiko. So, wait a minute, you support it. You, you want to wipe out corruption? It's not possible. Our government that is trying to wipe it out must be able to pay the salaries of civil servants so that the economy will move on. Without the salary being paid, the economy will not go on because these are the bulk of people that spend within the community. Right. My tenants are unable to pay their, their rent. Wow. So that is the bill of things. Okay. And I want to add more. Please. Recently, they are discussing about selling Nigerian assets. It is this same type of people that lose our money that will still use that money to buy the Nigerian assets. They will not become owners or loss. They've stolen the money before, so they have the money to buy all these MLM, MLBG, all these uh, companies. At the end of it all, we will still be worshipping them because they have the money to buy it. Okay. Let me. Let this thank you. issue of corruption is not the thing we can solve yeah, in my generation. It has to start by reorientation our children. Okay. Give a five year old boy. Five pound uh, paper. Thank and give him two pound coin. Thank you so much. Let me, let me come back to Honorable. He's talking about it may not happen in this generation. Do you agree? If you look at what I've been saying all along, we are on the same page. It will be very, very difficult. I have talked about reorientation, and in reorientation, our people. It takes a longer, a longer time. So what we're saying is this cannot be it's, reduced it's a, it's a, within it's a, five it's a, year it's a, period. It's a, it's a, Five years, yes. not even 20 years. No. I, can, I can guarantee you that. What? Because where you have a nation where substantial percentage of that nation is corrupt, what do you want to do? Corruption in the higher level and at the lower level. A lot of people at the grassroots were looking at, oh, if I vote you in, you will not remember me. So give me what I may take from you now because I may likely not see you by the time signing is taking you about. Before you go to the office, give me my own money. I tell you these instances. Let me give you one instance. I was in the parliament when Senate President Wabara was asked to step down yes. when he was impeached. You remember? Yeah, Wabara. Because there was a bribery allegation. And do you know what Wabara said? Can you remember that? That I also sold my house to contest the election. He said it. Can you imagine such? That I also sold my house 
to, to bribe the, the electorate to conduct the election. So that is to tell you that corruption is not because if he did not do, he eh, won't get, won't get it there. But you have to have money. Okay, tell me if you want to contest either presidency or governor or whatever. I know what I spent in the last dispensation. Contesting for the primaries of a, a, a governorship. You understand me? That is the system. That is the tradition. It's a difficult thing to eradicate. That's why I'm telling you, not even in the next 20 years. So does that mean that Nigeria presently should just take up the, the pain and the... the well, the I think the um, I, I still want to believe that... Um, uh, I, I don't know, you know, they say sometimes prayer does everything. With the intervention of God and all sorts of things, I'm sure we'll get somewhere one day. But we still need one leader that will act according to. Because there are some level of Nigerians that are, the, that are higher than the law. Are you getting me? In the, okay, when you see in the course of all of this as we speak, there are some untouchable Nigerians. But I won't want to talk about that. Untouchable Nigerians that we know they are highly corrupt in nature. Right. Would you say the reason why these people are not, uh, uh, the, the system is not able to touch them is because of their contribution to whoever is already in the system? Well, I don't want to know. But all I know, I don't know about that. But all I know is this. There are some untouchable Nigerians that are above the law. Can any Nigerian ever be able to touch them? Well, look, my dear right. brother, if you bring somebody, I don't, it's very possible. It is very possible. Look at what happens in Ghana in those days mm -hmm. by Rollins. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it could happen? Hmm? Mm -hmm. I'm sure God will bring somebody one day that will do the needful. <clears throat> that will do the needful. That will damn any consequences and do what they need to do to put Nigeria on, on, the, path. on the path of... Uh, 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 yes. Can you see that, for example, happening in 2019? Oh. <laughs> I don't want to preempt. But you, you, you have I been, don't, I don't, you, you I don't, I don't, I don't want to preempt. I don't want to preempt. Okay. So it, is, it depends on the people. It depends on the people. You know, Nigerians, they like, they don't like the truth. They like a lot of lies. So which means? I'll tell you one thing. Before you do. Okay. Let me uh, take the call. Uh, Martin, hi. Where are you calling from? Hello. Hi, Martin. Yes. You're welcome to the program. Good morning, Alistair. <laughs> I want to commend your, your commitment. Thank you very much. You are a great man of Nigeria. Thank you. Yes, I'm happy talking with you this morning, and uh, I'm interested in this program. I always watch your program, though I didn't uh, start from the beginning. I just entered now, and I saw. And from where I started, I I want to also commend uh, your guest in the studio. Honorable Kaidi. Thank you. Okay, uh, he's uh, the way he's been talking. He looks like a good politician. Mm -hmm. uh, I think these are the likes of mind that we should need in our in our country, Nigeria, to make it great. Mm -hmm. Politicians in Nigeria, they are political enemies and they are they, they are spiritual enemies. That is what they have made Nigeria to be. But in the likes of this one, he has just demonstrated the 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 the, the godly mind that. The fact that he's a, big, a PDP does not mean he cannot work with any, uh, any other party when they are in government. Mm. PDP is out of government. So they can support whoever is in government. That is how politics should go. In the time of campaign, they can, they can put out their, their placards and whatever. But now that APC is, in, is on the seat, they should do all the, all, the need, all the needful to support APC. That is how it should go. And uh, in fighting corruption, I want to, to say that Nigeria has really been soaked in the depth of corruption that only God can bring us out of it. Presently, it's only the president and maybe a few within that are fighting the corruption. So even in the, PD, in the APC, yeah. More than 90% of APC, they are against 
the fight against corruption. So they are, they, 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 it, it's going to be hard. From the top, we see that it's only Muhammad Buhari who is, who is alone. That is why he makes so many uh, what they will call mistakes. But in fighting corruption, I don't think there should be any mistake. These people that now know the law, I wonder where they have been when these atrocities have been going on. Well, so they did not know the law then. So it wasn't only when they are arrested or they, they, they now want to. To so, prove the law. Let me let me ask Martin. Thank you very much yeah. for calling in. Let me now ask Honorable before we go on a short break. He's asking about law. What do you think about the judiciary? Well, let me say this. That in my own days of growing as a young man, when I was coming up, I'm aware because I'm close to many judges because my father married. Uh, I sister to the then Justice of Adino. So I happened to close to many judges within the KJJRA, uh, Justice Ilori, and so on and so forth. I used to know the judges are very, very highly respected and upright. They don't socialize. You hardly see them in party. Are you with me? They are highly respected people and upright. On you know, up to 2007, when the whole situation turned upside down. And what if you ask me it? why, I will tell you. What caused it? Okay. Well, before you tell us the cause, the turnaround from 2007 that the judiciary send up, uh, end up finding themselves in a different corner, let's go on this short break. And then when we come back, we will definitely still have Honorable Kaudia Amusan with us, who will now expand a little bit more about the politics of Nigeria. Nigeria, good people, great nation. We'll be back after this short break. Thank you to our diverse viewers. Call us now on 0208-808-8800 or email us at bentelevisionuk at gmail.com. We are here, here to serve you. Serve. The Osasa Show is a one-stop development program that focuses on the promotion and implementation of sustainable development in Nigeria. This show provides information from state actors to non-state actors and vice versa regarding economic, social and environmental policies that cut across borders. Your Excellency Executive Governor of Ikita State, Distinguished Senator Dino Milaya, Honorable Minister of Health, Distinguished Senator Matthew Orohide, Your Excellency Nyenta Mweke. Is PDP going to be able to regain their state? It is the people that will decide who goes there. Are you scared? No, for God's sake. I am a veteran. Is there any such thing as free health care in Nigeria? We pretend to be doing <laughs> that. Why is it that in the 21st century, Nigeria doesn't have affordable and quality health care for the poor? This is the Osasu Show. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, the newest home away from home in the Nigerian hospitality industry. Ten minutes only from the local and international airports is the perfect spot for your relaxation whenever you are in Lagos. 24-hour non-stop electricity, cozy and colorful rooms, Wi-Fi internet connection, and flat screen cable television. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, our exquisite restaurant and full bar are simply second to none in taste and style. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, we are located at the posh serene neighborhood in the KJB Business District. Your satisfaction is our first concern, so we train our staff to be. 
professional and personable. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, number 20 Moshuda Bella Crescent, Ikeja Lagos, telephone plus 234-1291-7929 plus 234-708-287-7512. Bavidi Luxury Hotel, the new home away from home. Still watching us here live on Ben Television, www.bentelevision.com, start time in Nigeria, Abuja, and of course those watching online and those watching on Facebook, which is a live link uh, added onto the bonus of having to reach us from everywhere. Uh, I still have the Honorable Kaidi Amuso in the studio here in London, and we're talking before the break on judiciary, on the judicial system in Nigeria, Absolutely. their role so far, and what you think about it, even on the arrest of the so-called so judges. judges. And well, 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 before the arrest, we should talk about the background of what led to the arrest mm -hmm. so that we'll be able to find a solution to it. Like I said earlier, I am aware that judges are upright and respected people in this society up to, until 2007. Seven. And the cause of this is simple. The then, you know, the, uh, the then... Um, AD, um, uh, what is it called? Something? The, the party? AD, Alliance, part, AD Alliance for Democracy, yeah. where they won't rule in the Southwest between 2003 mm -hmm. and 2007. Correct. But when they lost five out of the state, if you remember, to PDP, you remember that? Yes. In 2007. Apart from Lagos. I Apart from only Lagos. Lagos. Only Lagos was left alone for AD, which eventually turned to AC. However, the leadership of the AD then conveyed a meeting a strategic meeting for that matter to look for you to fashion a way out how to recover those states. I could remember vividly from the information at my disposal that there was a son in your state. I wouldn't want to mention him, but I know him. Who proposed at that meeting that in order to recover all those lost states, are you getting me? Yeah. That they cannot do it on the field, rather in the court. Therefore, he proposed that they should romance the judiciary and the media. Mm. And that what led to corruption in the judiciary. And that was led to recovery of some state in the southwest and one in the south side, if you remember very well. I would not want to mention the states, but I'm sure anybody that is following the trend of political activities in Nigeria we know what I am saying. And that was the beginning of corruption in the judges' quarters. I'm aware some judges were bought brand new cars, moved from one place to a higher place. Whenever any judge is going out of the country, <laughs> they are counted as you know credited with fifty thousand pounds, hundred thousand pounds as gifts. So what do you expect? The judges that I know, eh, on their retirement, sometimes they don't even have a house to retire into. Some go through a lot of stress to build just one house in order to retire into it in the then days. But the reverse is now what? The case. Mm. Where you will see a judge with a fleet of cars, eh, 15, 18 cars, including Rolls Royce. Can you imagine? I will not oppose to what... President Muhammad Buhari has done in the area of this society, that is the judiciary. But by my own way, I believe in following the trend of the law. I don't know the act that established the judiciary too well. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. But the due process eh, need to be followed. But one thing that I know is that judges has no immunity. immunity. So as judges has no immunity, and now, of course, we're seeing the present administration, uh, President Muhammad Bahari, is dealing on their cases. What do you think about the revelation in the present National Assembly, especially coming from the likes of Jibril uh, Abdulmumin, <laughs> who has now been suspended because he's kind of a systematically a colleague of yours, even though you're a former back then? My dear, my dear, my dear brother, I am a victim in 2000 and... Was it in 2007 or eight? Uh, 2008 or eight, yes, rather. I was also suspended alongside with Dino Milai, though my own case is different. My suspension happens to be as a result of the division within our state, 
when Dimeji Bankole was the speaker. the speaker of the House of Reps, when he was being opposed by Dino Milayanko because of the way he was also managing the affairs of the... You see, out of majority, you see, this thing that we're calling democracy is, also, is crazy as well. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. It is crazy. Because the concept of... I'm a political scientist. The concept of democracy is this. Let's assume we are going to, for a vote. You have the like of lawyers, um, doctors, engineers on one side. They are 10 in numbers. And let's have the like of 20 people who are artisans. From bricklayer to Liberals, carpenter, laborers, let them be 20. And the professionals on this side are saying this is the right way. Meanwhile, the laborers and artisans are saying this is the way. However, we know it is the wrong way. And let us put it to fault. Who wins? The 20. That is the essence of democracy. That's why the fella got the concept by a long time ago by thinking that democracy is demonstration of what? Craze. Craze. And that is what is happening. If one person is saying the truth, and about 300 people are saying no, is lying, and they gang up against what we expect to happen. But one thing I know about the law that has applied the parliament in Nigeria, they have the right to do what they are doing. Tinkering with the budget and so on and so forth. It is, they are, they are, uh, they have the, yes. Of the, of the, no, no, apart from the representative of the people, when the executive send their bill to the parliament, are you getting me? They have the right to make a, amendment, adjustment and so on and so forth. That's what they call the pardon. It's a tradition. Which within the parliament, which have been there all along, but not constitutional. It, it, it is because no, they have the right to do the it. Right. They have the right to do it because when so the ministry and MDA come, send in their their proposal, they have the right to amend that proposal. You understand me? Yeah. They have a right. Yeah. It's part yeah. of part and parcel of, of the constitution duty, because yeah. that is their duty. To check, make laws, check, and you know, appropriate, do all sort of things, checkmate, uh, corruption, do you know? It is uh, so until, <laughs> until, until the, the 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 constitution is amended. I don't think that can that can. So, so in that case, let me quickly take uh, Adi before I come back to you. Adi, you're welcome to the program. Where you calling from? Uh, uh, good morning, doctor. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Yes, I can hear you now, Adi. Yeah, good morning, Doctor. Good morning. And uh, Honorable Amushan. Morning, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Honorable for the light he has shown to us. Okay. And um, I think he has been very, very, uh, to some extent, honest. But I want to expand the scope, yes, to the fact that the corruption we're having is not just, just start from the AD. It started... Because the people that are running the state and they're running the affair, the political elite are not carrying the common man on the street along. They are doing everything that will not favor the common man. And the purpose of going, go, going to government to represent people in democracy is that you must serve the people. But in what we have today and what has been happening from the beginning of this uh, so-called dispensation of democracy in Nigeria is that the the people are going there to go and do self-serving. You can remember during the time of election, during the time of Basanjo, Basanjo awarded them the so-called uh, representative. Mm -hmm. Big fat, fat allowance. They did not object for that. He gave them money. They said the uh, furniture allowance, all this allowance, they take it. They give them housing allowance, despite the fact that they were lost in government uh, house. At the end of the day, most of these uh, uh, politicians and the representatives were able to buy uh, the house from the government. The house that was supposed to be the government property was allocated to themselves and they bought it over. That's the corruption in a way. And secondly, this one that my brother... My brother was saying that they already started it. They started when the PDP hijacked the state from them. It was a corruption in a way. It did not come from any like it was based on rigging. Rigging a mask is a corruption in its own way. So let us address it. Okay. Option A4 was to 
deal with all this problem that should, should not have happened to Nigeria in the first place. But we allow this thing to happen. For us to say it's not going to happen, it's going to happen in our own time if you de declare a political will to fight this corruption. Because you cause it, you place it on ourselves. Thank you very much. For my brother to say that it's not going to happen in our own days, era, it can happen. When you have a political detail, can look at our, our, our set on the fair and say this thing is not going to happen. Thank you. And it will stop. Thank you, Adi. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, yes. Adi mentioned that he wanted to see this thing happen in his political time. By God's grace, I pray. Me too. Uh, I pray so, so that I can enjoy part of it. And he mentioned my about AD, probably not the root. But PDP has an issue. What is the issue? Faction. Good. No leadership. Great. On those state election is coming around the corner. Great. Jimo Ibrahim. Uh, the other person is there as well. Jagere. Jagere. Okay. S-A-N. What is really going on? <laughs> you guys can't get your act let, together. Let, 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 and let, let, there's no caretaker committee in PDP okay, constitution. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you this. I'm part and parcel of the process. And I tell you what. PDP's problem is has to do with external interfering. External. external. So now you're blaming external. thought forces. External interfering. Blaming thought forces. Yes. External interfering that does not want PDP to get their ass together. Are you with me? Look at the issue of Undo election that you have just said. There was a primary that was duly you know, mm -hmm. conducted in the state. Under, in the state, under, under PDP, under the caretaker committee, on, under the under one caretaker committee. But uh, there uh, should oh, be a caretaker that, committee. That, in that's PDP. Hold on. No, they, they can't be. The, 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 the control of the party so allow a caretaker where there is no um, where there is no chairman or whatever. The caretaker committee takes over. That is the condition. That's but a, they have that, a chairman. They have a chairman, so but because somebody the somebody on the other side insisted that I'm the chairman, but he was. He was, he was appointed to finish the tenure of the former chairman that resigned. Don't forget. But can you actually even, before you expanded on that, can you actually mm. even go back to, for example, in, within the PDP back in the days, a, the, uh, for the chairman to always imagine there must be your so-called convention. Absolutely. And uh, which means technically now, there has not been any convention which may make it national. No, 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 let me tell you. Let me tell you what actually happened. Let me start from when um, um, former Governor Muazu resigned as the national chairman. Which was put not from the convention as well. No, that, 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 yeah, you know, somebody also left. Yes. And it was to complete. You don't, you don't need a convention for that. You are only appoint another person from that zone to complete the tenure of... Bamanga Tukor. The, the, yeah, to co complete the tenure of Bamanga Tukor. You understand me? Bamanga Tukos was produced by convention. Yes. You don't need another convention when Bamanga Tuko was removed from office. All you need to do is appoint somebody from that same zone. Because all these positions are zoned, mm -hmm. you can't go out of that zone to take another person. You must take from that zone to complete the tenure. So Muazu was appointed to complete the tenure of Bamanga Tuko. And when Muazu also left, all you need to do is get another person, say from that zone, to complete the tenure. So uh, that's what brought Sheriff in. That was what brought Sheriff in. Are you getting me? Then there was another, another, con another this thing, convention that was stated to do what? To, to, to elect another national chairman. Mm -hmm. But one way or the other, some group of people went to court and said Sheriff must continue. That's, that's where the problem started. And these people that went to court are PDP members? They also be, yes, I agree. So that PDP, there's that, no talk No, 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 they're, they're PDP members. But that does not mean that they can't be used by external forces. It does not matter because their PDP does not... Even, yes, it's a kind of political manipulation. It's allowed. Yes, it is allowed. It is allowed. It's legal. Yes, it is legal. <laughs> if a politician and you don't know how to man manipulate all of it, that's why I will come back to the issue of Winning the state of AD and uh, some, something of that that my brother mentioned now. I will still answer him over that. I agree with what he said in total. But I will explain some certain things back to him. So it is the SNI forces that is being still behind all of this. When you look at Justice Abank, who gave that order on the on the thing? If any, any judge is going to be probed whatsoever, it should be one of those. 
because I personally have written a petition against Abang before. But as of today, it's untouchable. I know somebody that probably can even get an injunction on Sunday from Justice Abang in my state. On Sunday, he can get it. I'm telling you, injunctions, order, fly from Abang's court anyhow. Anyhow. And he's still sitting. And he's still sitting as a judge. So that's why I'm telling you, it has the, in, in, the, in the tone of external forces. I will not want to say, but it's politics. It is what allowed. Okay. Let me, uh, let me take Yenka. Yenka, you're welcome to the program. And where you call him from, please? Lisa. Sonu. So look at it. Hey, love you, Ako. Love you, love Yawa, yawa, yawa. Apart from that, the three of us, we are from Abe Okuta Ogo State, including the Honorable. Absolutely, sir. Yes, thank you. My name is Inka Thomas, Honorable. I know you very well. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm very proud of you. God bless you. Extent. <laughs> you are alive during the time of a Wula War, 12 to 3rd yes. in the law court. I'm yes. all right, sir. Yes, but I was a young boy, sir. Yeah, what is 12 to 3rd? How can a nation or a state be called 12 to 3rd? A 2 third of a nation. Can you prove that? One, two. You said something that I really totally disagree with you. Yes, sir. You and I lived in Abe Okuta when Obas Ojo descended from Abuja mm. to come and arrest Ogun State from Oshoba. Yes or no, mm. sir? <laughs> Technically. Yes or no? Well, yes or no, sir? Technically, yes. Of, of a do or die affair. No, that technically. Was the that they brought to Ogun State then. And you are alive, sir. I yes, knew you it. very well at that period of time. What will you call that? Is that not corruption? Sir, I want Alisa to ask you a very good question. You can and answer. remember you told us this morning yes, that when you are coming from Nigeria, some people in Nigerian airport mm. are asking you for bribe. Yes. And I'm very proud of you. Mm. This question has been raised four times here. Mm. That people said they travel to Nigeria when they are coming back. Some immigration officers are asking for bribe. Yeah. I'm happy for the way you dealt with that situation. Problem. Don't give bribe and don't collect. Sir, while you are in the House of Representatives, yes, sir. did you take bribe or give it bribe to people? That's my first question. No. Second question, sir. You are saying something about the AD state. Please, I want you to re re withdraw that statement. Okay. Said that the AD after corruption in 2007. I've just referred you to first to third of our war. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. The problem that is besetting with the PDP is PDP's cup of tea. Don't say it's external forces. Don't take us into terrestrial life. And the, on those states you are referring to, I am asking you a question. Uh, yes, INEC, which of this fraction do you want INEC to I recognize? That is the first question I'm asking. Don't twist this issue here. You are on the national television. Thank you very much. Honorable Amusho, you are yes, on the national television. I'm aware, sir. Call a spade a spade. Thank Please. you. I'm aware, Mr. Yinka. I'm aware, Mr. Yinka. Honorable Yinka has asked you some questions. questions. Fantastic. What is 12 2 thought? Well, let me tell you, as at when that was happening, I was a teenager. I don't know too much about politics. I was not interested. I started from the one I'm aware, I know, and I can defend. The issue of 12 to 3rd, I know, was during the Awolowo era, Sukshagari, so call of them. I don't know too much about it. You understand mm. me? But what I know more is what I am explaining. And he has asked some German question. That was on your stole away um, part of uh, whatever uh, governorship from, uh, from who? From Governor Shobaden. But I tell you what, it's on record. Are you getting me? Trust Nigerians, when they are fed up of one party, you know, they don't care whatever party, what, even if they don't have a blueprint, they will vote for them. You understand me? It's, it's still the same thing that relates to the question of the earlier uh, person mm -hmm. that was talking about issue of AD and everything. I'll tell you one thing. Obaso I will tell you I'm not a politician, but I read, uh, I read uh, is it statistics or how does it normally call it? You understand me? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, what Obaso did then was more of a technicality. Technicality. 
And he got away with it. And he got away with it. You know what he did? He invited one of the governor of the states that I will not want to mention in any state. Told them that I need majority of the parliamentarian in my own party, which is PDP, to be able to allow me to do some of the to make some of the to, uh, to pass some of the bills so as to help the southwest. You understand me? Some bills to help the formation of some certain things in the southwest, which some of them key into it. You understand me? Some of them do what key into it, except only one governor who refused. You will remember that then the first election was the House of uh, there was a um, National Assembly election in 2007. They all keen to it, five governors keen to it, except wow. one. And in the order of the election was the National Assembly as the first election. And PDP now clears all the National Assembly election except That's the right. Lagos State members. Don't forget. And one thing you should realize is that Nigeria election, wherever it tilt to, is always followed by bandwagon. And that was what led to the loss of all those five states. Then it's all about technicality. It's not that they 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 they, they read or something happened. It's a common sense. Like I said, I will tell you I'm not a politician, but I read strategy <laughs> while I was in the army. And everything is don't forget that somebody with a strategical thinking. Is better than a politician sometimes. Sometimes, strategical thinking is more better than a political thinking, a political thinking. So, it was more of a strategy and technicality. It's not that he directly, you understand me, rigged that election. He did not rig. That I can confirm to you because I was involved. So, as he said as well, before I take a heavy, he said, Which of the PDP? Do you think INEX should support or which function? Well, let me tell you one thing. That depends on the legal uh, aspect of it. It, it, uh, it has to be decided by law, by the court of law. But as we speak today, look at, let's take a, a election for an example, primaries. One was done at the instance in the state, at the instance of the INEC. And all the security agencies were in attendance. Were in attendance, and that is the position of law that INEC must be present. Then another one was done outside the state in Ibadan. In Ibadan, without the presence of INEC or the necessary uh, required uh, organ of the government to supervise it. And that same person that does his own outside the government now approached a court, who now said. He must be validly recognized after INEC has submitted, submitted the name of Jagede. I mean, the state has submitted the name of Jagede. It's, it's a common sense thing. Look at it. It is a common sense thing. But by and large, it's still, it's still a kind of technicality to weaken the PDP because the electorate will be confused. Are you getting me? They will not know who to vote for between the two. And at the end of the day, they will revert back and vote for APC. It's allowed. But <laughs> if, if, if we want to take the technicalities of maybe something that's uh, taking place and... Okay, okay, wait, 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 Let me take Harvey. Okay, go Harvey, ahead. you're welcome to the program. Where are you calling from? Harvey, Harvey, from Birmingham. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, I just want to talk, uh, speak to your guest. Uh, yeah, about, you, sir. yeah uh, about this technicality. Uh, uh, but I don't think you will exonerate the, your members that uh, rely on impunity for 16 years and <laughs> this business as usual of PDP. Uh, they forget to know that they should have changed their way of life and the way they, they do things. You know, uh, Honorable, that Sheriff was wherever he is, either Meduguri or Kabima or Abuja, when the lack of IFI, she, we came, the same governor, Mimiko, went to meet him to come and salvage 
uh, uh, PDP uh, from destruction. And we know clearly, they said it on TV, live TV, that uh, 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 Sharif has a uh, private jet, Sharif has money <laughs> to fight, uh, to fight uh, APC. And today, uh, I find it uh, funny when you say the external force. External force in the sense that your, 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 your the so-called powerful members at this time, because at the moment, PDP, these governors are called, I mentioned their name, Fire Shu, Wiki, and 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 Mimiko are a powerful member of PDP, decided to bring a, 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 a sheriff uh, to, 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 to continue the mandate of uh, 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 the Zimaj, if I'm mm -hmm. right. Yes, you're right. Yes. So, now, we, 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 we like I earlier said, the impunity of, of, of PDP. They, 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 they don't want to lose it on a person like uh, uh, a sheriff. And, and it, it, it backfired. Okay. And you, you the decision you. went to the protocol court. Went to protocol court. You know all the stories. I was there too. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Adi. <laughs> let me come back to Honorable. Honorable. Yes, yes. Adi. Yeah, let me quickly say this. I told you earlier on that what brought about sheriff was to complete the tenor of Muazo. Are you getting me? Is there anything wrong let, let, in approaching <coughs> somebody that they believe come and complete the How tenor? Many, okay, let's let me ask. Mm. How many months were left for Muazo to complete his tenor? Well, well for, for, for now, for come? now, I, I cannot actually say this is the number of months. But I know that. Muazu was about completing his tenure right. when he resigned. So what's and the rightful thing, the rightful, three, 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 three months, three months of that. The rightful thing to be done then was to look for somebody from that zone. You understand me? Complete that tenure because Finish. because definitely the chairmanship has to be zoned elsewhere. According to the PDP, uh, uh, zoning wait, zoning arrangement, you cannot have the president, eh? From you can't have the oh, chairman. You can't have the chairman and the president from the, the same part of the country. You understand me? So when the tenure of Muazu now ended, which was being uh, replaced by um, 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 somebody from Sher by, 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 by sheriff. I mean by is it is it sheriff? Yeah, sheriff. Yeah, sheriff. Now some people within PDP now went to court and say Muazu was complete four years tenure. That the 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 the, the so tenor has not you, completed. You guys, do we, we did not know my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear brother. Let me let, let me, me let me. The problem of PDP, I believe, is still within the PDP, through some psychophant, some agent of destruction. I'm not look. I'm not blaming the opposition. I've told you it is allowed. If I'm if I'm if I'm a sitting president or I'm in the opposition party, I must definitely. It's a political manipulation. I must do it as well. You know, because not to allow them to settle so that my party can and have a way out. Well, that is just it. Because I want to I want to quickly run away from this politics because this issue of recession <laughs> in Nigeria, there's unemployment in Nigeria. Absolutely. And so there's well, economic is. challenges that is facing the country. But before then, let me just quickly take a, I think Francis uh call. Francis, uh where are you calling from? I'm calling from Manchester. Okay, you're welcome. Your your question to the honorable contribution. Uh, it's only when you are saying that you are going to go away from politics. I just want to give an illustration to Honorable Amusho. Okay. During the tenure of Benga Daniel, can any fraction in Abiyokuta held any meeting that Benga will not destroy? It? Secondly, that is the same thing that happened in Ondo, where they had to take that election down to a battle. So with that, it is still tantamount to a reality and a fact that PDP. The reality is that the bona fide group or factions that are supposed to have their meeting, held their meeting in the battle. And that is it. And it is sealed. There is nothing about that. Honorable, I asked a question before. I said, were you being given a bribe or did you give any money to people during your tenure as a representative of Oku State in the House of uh, Representatives? Okay. So I get to answer that question. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Uh, he uh, asked the question. Well, I think uh, he needs to elaborate on the kind of bribe. Because as I am, 
I can stand here and raise my shoulder high. That I have, I, I have never taken any bribe while I was in the parliament, nor give anybody any bribe. Period. That is it. Okay. But if you talk in terms of my allowances and salary, which is recommended by law, to be given to, to be given to me. It's a different point. That's correct. I will accept responsibility for that. Correct. So now let me quickly go into uh, unemployment in Nigeria. You, you are a businessman right now, officially known as one rather than a politician. How do you see the challenges of creating jobs or people becoming self-employed with the recession? Not just only in Nigeria at, at least, but the challenges of being your own boss. And creating jobs. Well, let, 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 let me quickly say this: unemployment in Nigeria, mm, the major challenge. Are you getting me? Mm. Which is not just now. It has been there from the onset, and I will blame first and foremost corruption, because most of the resources that needed to be channeled to do one thing or the other have flown out of the country by corrupt officials. Especially when you want to talk about employment, you can't talk about employment without power. That's electricity. That's elect you can't talk about employment without roads. Are you getting me? Mm. A lot of infrastructure are attached to it. Are you getting me? Okay, let's take an example. In the earlier days, manufacturing was thriving in Nigeria. But by the time we started having power value, are you getting me? Go and look at most of the industry today. They have virtually closed what down because of cost of running the power in manufacturing sector. Because you have to solely depend 24 seconds on generator. And when you look at the cost of running that gen, hmm, it's even advisable to import than to produce. And you know, when we are importing, it's a problem. Mm. It's affect our employment. But when we manufacture, you employ. That is where I say corruption too has to do a lot. You know, it's a menace in area of employment. Because if all the stolen funds were channeled into power production mm. or were able to produce power, these people will be able to produce at less cost, mm. and the imported one will not be more than will not be more um, will, will be less will be, how do I call, will not be less expensive than what is produced within okay. the I mean locally. Therefore, they will encourage local manufacturing. But today. Most of the high houses have been turned to churches. Now look at it. There were churches now. So a lot of people were out of employment. And another thing that I see in area of employment that we are missing is this. You know, skills acquisition are not encouraged in Nigeria. Because you guys were Be the because, because, <laughs> let me tell you, because we believe more on white cooler jobs. No. Put on tie, looking for bank work, Ministry work, all this work. How many people can these sectors employ? I'm still of the opinion that skill should be a key in employment area to reduce unemployment. There was a time I converse and propose that the NYSA National Youth Service Corps that we're doing in Nigeria, that one year should be converted to skill work acquisition. The reason why NYC was established has been achieved. It was actually established to integrate Nigerians. When you see somebody who went to school in the south, done in the service, he goes to the north. The north will come to the south. It's a form of integration. And as far as I'm concerned, we have integrated ourselves enough. And I'm conversing that that one year NYC service should be, should, be, should be converted to that the one year acquisition. skill acquisition. And so that, paid at the same rate. Yes, so that that one year, at the end of the service, the, this same person, the youth couple, will have a choice to look for 
a white collar job and if you cannot get it he mm. will revert back Into to that slender. skill acquisition to sustain himself for a while let me uh, take uh, david uh, david you're welcome where you're calling from yeah i'm calling from london okay you're welcome to the program yeah good morning yeah i i, I welcome the honorable thank you sir and i want to thank you for this medium sir um number one uh, what I want to make comments on is forget about the issue of bribery. Uh, when you talk of a bus manager, rigging is rigging. There's no technicalities about it. Right. When you at this age, sir, you should be protecting your name. You know, when you, I think you are still a member of PDP, yeah. look at the monumental proportion. Of course. How uh, the money was stolen in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And look at minimum wage in Nigeria at the moment. When we say unemployment is um, maybe 10 or 12 percent, technically it's more than 50 percent. When somebody is earning 18,000 a month and a bag of rice is 30,000, how do you expect that thing to cope? Most workers are at that, that level, you know, or even below that. And they are still owing them salaries. How do we expect common people to survive? Yeah. You know, there has been no people oriented uh, laws that have been passed in the upper houses. You know, everything is broken down. <laughs> Please don't just come here, say the truth, you know, forget forget about uh, politics, forget about technicalities. Just come and say the truth to us here. We know what is going on. Please thank you, sir. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, my one work of David. Thank you. Well, David has asked about the uh, issue of technicality that I should not say it. But you see, in politics, there are some certain indices that a lot of people doesn't know. You understand me? When you are playing it, you have to play out your position one way or the other. You understand me? He is not a politician. But because when I was like him, outside politics, I will say the same thing. But when I got inside, it was a different ball game. Are you with me? So this technicality we are talking about is part and parcel of the indices of playing politics. politics. You understand me? Part and parcel of the indices of playing politics. And the issue of corruption that they cannot pay salary, they cannot do this, they cannot do that. Yes, I am coming to it. Somebody has just said one thing that in Ogun State something happened, the governor cannot pay salary, he cannot do this. Well, I will still come back to it. Are you getting me? That's area of of uh, was economy. You know, mm. the recession and everything was what caused that. But I will still come back to it. You understand me? Okay. That's the cause for all of this. Mm. Well, I'm, still I'm not being sentimental or whatever. Let me tell you one thing, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not in PDP. But I pray for APC to succeed. Because for, to, for their success... It will affect me, affect my children, affect my grandchildren. So I am not being sentimental or partisan in whatever I say. Oh, shit. I will support any government as long as they are doing the right thing. And any government that does not subscribe to being criticized cannot move forward. Mm. As I'm sitting here, I want criticism. I want you to tell me the right thing. I'm not opposed to what majority of these people have been saying. You understand me? It's part of the indices, ingredients. Ingredient of, of democracy. democracy. You understand? You must be opposed. You must be criticized. All the way. So I'm even happy that I'm getting... I, I, can't, I, can't, I, I can't expect everybody to support whatever I'm what? saying. I need to be criticized so that I will learn from them. And they will also do what? Learn from me. Uh, you know, a man is not an island. No man is You not. can't know everything. No, that's true. That's true. I'm still talking to Honorable Kadi Amunso as, uh, as we begin to round down before noon time here in London, coming to you live from London. I presume because we have suddenly changed our time in the UK. So the time now is probably 10 minutes or 13 minutes to 12 noon, while in Nigeria is probably same time but to 11 a.m., I believe. Yes. In the morning. So my last caller would be Remy. Uh, Remy, you're welcome to the program. Hello, Remy. 
Right. So probably that's my last caller gone. Now I really want to quickly take this issue on the members of the National Assembly. Do you think they should be paid their salary if they come from a particular state and that state cannot pay salary? Why should they be paid? It's a different, it's a different uh, sacrifice. Um, I want sacri to hear. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. It's a different ball game. They are serving the national entity, and some are, you know, serving the state. And according to the Ramfac distribution of fund, mm. you understand, state has its own percentage, while the national assembly has its own percentage. If the state cannot. You know, pay the salary. As we have it's, 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 it's different from the national. The state has to look inward. As we are saying, it's not all the state that cannot pay their salary. You must be able to generate income from the state. That's why you are open to taxation. Are you getting me? And so on and so forth. Putting a governor there, are you getting me? Who cannot look inward and generate income? It's, it has no business to be there. I'm sorry with all due respect. He has no what business, business to be, to be there. Expecting that money should come, from allocation will come from the center every month. And that is what you sit, by, uh, uh, sit with every day and share. No. Take a look at Lagos State as we speak today. They are generating over and above 25 billion monthly. Are you getting me? That is exactly what you are saying. But it cannot apply to all other states because Lagos, by its nature, was a capital before. And it has been an established business arena before now. Mm. So a lot of um, businesses are in Lagos. Um, they go about doing their business. Uh, uh, not more than 10, uh, 15 percent are looking at politics because a lot of jobs are available. They are doing their business and they are paying their tax. Mm. So each and every governor must be able to look inward. To Are you getting me? Mm. Inward to see that, look, I, I should be able to, you know, find a way to pay my staff salary. Look, when you are saying this to National Assembly, what about the security votes that accrue to the governor? In the area of some, some, some government... Are they still collected? Some, yeah, of course, yes. It is your right. It is your law. Some government take as much as 200 million, 300 million, 400 million every month. For security vote, they should to get us in that kind of money and pay their because they are start their workers. The workers should be a priority to them. Should be a, you know some government flying uh, private jets, the higher private jet going to Lagos from Abuja. Why can they not go in commercial flight? That's because maybe the the party uh, the the, uh, the politician in Abuja are mm. demanding for them. For example, they call them in the morning. And say we're having a meeting at 5 p.m. Well, that is, wait, wait, wait. it's possible at that, but it shouldn't be a thing of a reoccurring. Re 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 it seems like that's no, 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 no. no, 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 no. Let me tell you, it shouldn't be a reoccurring uh, 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 thing. You understand me? In a situation where you cannot get that, well, fine. But mostly, mostly, you can get a, 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 a normal flight as well. I know some governors while they're in office, they fly commercial, they, they fly commercial and not a hired one. But in some cases, right. once in a while, they do hired they private uh, district. You understand me? We should try and reduce cost. We should try and reduce cost. We should try and reduce cost. Honorable, as we begin to run up, what messages do you really have for not just the diaspora, of course, because people are watching from everywhere. 2019 cannot be put to one corner. <laughs> Let's be realistic. <laughs> as a former member there and as an active politician still, mm -hmm. a businessman, how would you like people to start gauging 2019? Well, the point is this. 2019, to me, is still far from now. We are still in 2016. But pol politically, it's not no, far. No, politically, it's not far. But to some people outside, it's far. But you as a politician... But I tell you, so I tell you, I tell you one thing. You see, it, it depends on the electorate. They have to vet the achievement of the present government, vis-a-vis -vis the past and the past government, mm. party, and so on and so forth. And be able to decide which one is better for us. We have seen government that has come, 
ruled by some kind of party. We have seen another government now that took over by another party. Their achievements compared to the past achievements. Yes, I agree that they said corruption ravaged the, uh, the past administration. And I, you know, I said it here that I am an advocate of anti work corruption. And that was why I was commending Muhammad Dubuari, sorry, with all the President Muhammad Dubuari in his effort to sanitize the system hmm, from corruption. Whatever that is needed to be done in Nigeria should be done. It's for the sake of our unborn children. We need to sacrifice. If we don't do it, we cannot get it right. So I support him in that area. You understand me? Very well. So issue of economy is the key thing. And your last message to, to, to our viewers, you can talk to them directly. Well, viewers, there, there, there is your... I want to appeal to all of you, yes. especially the people in diaspora. You have seen what is in operation here. There's an added that says, if you don't participate in politics, it's a sin. Don't just sit back here and say, my people at home are bad, political operations at home are bad. Make your own contribution and how we can get it right. That is my appeal to the people in diaspora. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a, a discussion and a dialogue with right, uh, Honorable Kadi Amuson, who has been a member, a former member of the Nigerian House of Assembly between 2003, House of, House of Rep, between 2003 to 2011. And indeed, it's a pleasure for him to have shared and expanded on the politics of Nigerian system and quite a lot of other things for us in the diaspora to begin to think, not just for today, but even come 2019. Until next time, thank you for staying with us. You're watching us here on www.bentelevision.com. And for those watching us on Facebook, thank you very much for staying with us. And have a wonderful week. It's end of the month. November is around the corner. Bye for now.